Real quick disclaimer, everybody. These tests shouldn't be done by anyone at home. All these tests are done transparently. However, we're not an accredited laboratory. And lastly, these are done for educational purposes. No bias involved. Here we go. This is our second video, and this is the battery we're going to be testing. Now, we paid $199, including freight, for this one. It's a... Word should say... Word should, I can't say it. I'm not sure exactly how you say that, but it's a 12 volt 100 and it's cheap. It's very cheap and it doesn't mean it's bad. I just thought it was a great one to test. Um, I've read through the page thoroughly. I can't see an IP rating, so there's no point in doing an IP test on it because there's nothing to compare it against. But what I did want to call out, and I thought this was really interesting, is I look at this image here. And I see their battery. And then I see this other battery. And I'm pretty good with brand recognition. And if I had to guess, I think I know what brand they're alluding to here. And to my knowledge, it's not a bad brand. I haven't tested it. But I thought this was pretty uh, cavalier marketing. Sincere, authentic, reliable choose a reliable seller use it with confidence and without worry this one fake false labeling unreliable say no to secondhand battery cells and false claims don't let your purchase turn into a loss and a little zoom in here they've done this tricky little fake cross out 100 and put 78 amp hours in so i, I think that's a pretty cheeky bit of marketing so i'm really Starting the capacity test now, I thought I'd just show at the bottom there, you can see I've got a little DC power supply that I clip on, and I clip it on lower than the BMS cutoff, normally 5, 6, 7 volts, and the reason I do that is if the BMS opens and I'm not there watching it, the shunt loses power and I might lose the reading. So it doesn't change the outcome, and if it did, it would only be favourable for the battery, but I'm doing it so I don't lose any of the data. Now, I'm setting it up at half C, so I'm expecting a two hour test. I've got it fully charged as per the manual. This one said 14.4 plus minus 0.02 volts, so I've gone 14.6. I've done it till it stops taking any current and it, it all looks very behaved. So I've pulled the remote terminal from the solar and off we go. So it's done this now more than once to me. At 79 amp hours, or 80 amp hours, so 80% capacity depth of discharge, the FETs have opened, and the whole system's gone dead. Now, what I'm doing is I'm giving it a little bit of voltage back up with the power supply to trick the BMS into closing again, so the discharge FETs close and I can test again. But then the same thing happens again. And so I thought to myself, it might be BMS over temperature, so I left it alone for a good half an hour, hour, thought I'd come back and try it again, and the same thing happens. Okay, so it's done it yet again. Oh, you f Internally, it's exactly what you'd expect. High density foam, silicon. Overall, it looks like not a terrible build, but at least now we've got access to check the cell voltages, and then we'll know what's really going on. Okay, so I've got the whole thing apart now. See, so I've rebooted the BMS of a power supply, which is now off. I've got the cell pack out, which is pretty rough, but it's there. And it's gonna go out on low cell voltage, I would say. Point three. Wow, it's really, uh, there it goes. 2.3. This is it after the testing. Uh, pretty ironic, really, being that the eBay ad they had was showing this one being the high quality one and the competing one not being so, whereas 
this didn't even come close to nameplate. This cell has this weird crinkling and the blue insulation on the outside. So what did I get for $199? I got exactly what I expected. But it was a fun test all the same. And I'm sure we'll find some reuse for the cells. But this battery for me is not a battery I would buy again.